Okay, is somebody on already? Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Nicole Del Cogliano. You're just gonna see my, my face for a moment because I found in general, this technology works a little better for me um, in the office without the video. So, hello. <laughs> we are going to um, be talking about the Farm Beginnings program, but first I wanna just go over some of the technology we're using just to orient everyone. So I'm going to share my screen with you and just go over some instructions before we dive into content. And I see, I can see Holly Moore because your video is on. Is the audio okay? If you could just give me a thumbs up, Holly. Yes, sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. Yes, if you know how to do reactions already, that's fantastic. You can give me a little thumbs up. Okay, so we're just going to talk about this technology for a minute. Okay, so we are using Zoom, obviously. And so I muted a lot of you upon entry. So you'll see at, oops, sorry about that. Go back one. On the left side of the screen, you should have a mic icon. Then you can click on that to mute or unmute. In general, I ask people to keep muted just because of background noise. And then um, we can, in general, use the chat for questions, but if that doesn't work, you're welcome to unmute if you need to speak. And then the video, um, it's a little video camera. You click on that to have the video or to turn it off. And sometimes if you have a low bandwidth or it's like freezing, it can be useful to turn video off, which is what I often do. And then um, there's a chat icon at the bottom that looks like a little thought bubble. And so you can click on that and it will have, usually it'll say like everyone and you could chat something so everyone can see it. Um, you can also do messages one-on-one -on -one with people um, through that chat mechanism as well. And then if you wanna see who else is on the call, you can click on participants and you know you see different people's names, edit your name, all that just to see who's there. So we're gonna test this out in a minute and just make sure that everyone um, knows how to use the technology. And this is just the agenda about what we're gonna talk about tonight. So we're going to go over who I am a little bit, a little bit about the Organic Grower School, what is Farm Beginnings and why take it, and what will the course look like in 2021, 2020, 2021. Um, so I'm going to stop my screen share for a moment and we're going to practice in the chat box just to kind of see who's on the call and who we have together tonight. So if you wouldn't mind chat typing in the chat box, just, um, you know, where you're zooming in from, where you are, whatever little message you want to share would be great. And everyone should be able to see those. Great, we've got Kyle from Candler, Holly and your partner there whose name does not show up from South Carolina, Charleston, that's exciting. Marshall, North Carolina, that's north of Asheville. We've got Ellen Rubenstein Chalmis, yay, from Woodfin. She is a current Farm Beginning student. George G. Francesco from St. Petersburg, Florida. Awesome. Wow. <laughs> from Laurel, Maryland. That's awesome. I don't know where that is. Do you say that whale or whaley? Maybe you can't tell me that. <laughs> and 
and I'm in Asheville, but I live in Burnsville. All right. And Ruth, I saw that you were registered on the call too. I know um, she is joining from Florida. And then we have someone on the phone. So if you can't chat, you're welcome to unmute yourself and just say where you're calling in from. Yes, thank you, Ruth. Oh, Kyle, that's you, okay. <laughs> gotcha, thank you. Well, thanks for doing that. Feel free to use that. Um, chat mechanism as we go through the presentation. Um, one of the things is when I'm screen sharing on the computer, I cannot see the chat box. And so we will actually be, you know, upgrading our Zoom account to make it a little more easy to conduct these kind of trainings, especially since we're going to be hosting so many of our trainings virtually this year. Um, so I will try to get out of screen share occasionally just to check in on the questions. Um, but feel free if I'm speaking and you have something pressing that you don't understand or needs clarification, just to unmute yourself and ask the question. And I also gave people, um, you know, my phone number is on my email signature and told people if they're having problems just to, you know, text me or something. So I might check that occasionally in case somebody is having trouble getting on or hearing or something like that. Great, well, thanks everyone for doing that. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about with Farm Beginnings and the virtual piece is the possibility of having people from all over the place join the class. Um, that's, I think, a special opportunity that we have not only for participants, but also for bringing in different teachers. So thanks for sharing that. All right, I'm gonna tell you a little bit bit more about myself here in a minute. So I went over that as our agenda for this evening. Um, we should just go to an hour. That's what it was last time. You know, maybe we'll end early. Who knows? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, let me get everything to work here. There we go. So this is me and my family at my farm. So I have been with Organic Grower School since 2015. And one of um, you know, the ways that I interacted with Organic Grower School for many years was as a grower. So my husband and I have Green Toe Ground Farm in Yancey County, which is an hour north of Asheville. And it's a diverse uh, mixed organic vegetable farm. And we have been doing it since 2001. And so this is an old picture with my first daughter. And then there she is with us. That was actually last season um, at the farm. So I just wanted to, to share that um, we sell in the Asheville markets, direct farmers markets and restaurants. And then this year with all these disruptions, we're selling to um, food banks and food pantries and, and things like that which has been um, great for us to be able to access and provide our food to those outlets. Um, and also I wanted to share a little bit about who I am because I think that's, it's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about the Farm Beginnings program um, is because I have my own journey as a farmer and understanding you know, really what it takes to stay in the business um, and the key pieces that can really help stabilize and accelerate success for farmers. Um, and I'm also just doing it day to day, every day. So I bring a lot of relevant practical experience. Um, and so I just wanted to share a little bit with you about that. So now we're gonna learn a little bit about Organic Grower School. So I am sort of assuming a lot of you know about us. Um, but seeing as we're having folks joining from lots of different places, um, Organic Grower School has, we're I think going into our, let me do the quick math, 20, in 2021, it'll be 28 years. 
and our mission is to inspire, educate, and support people to farm, garden, and live organically. And so, um, you know, one of the ways that we do that in the work that I do in farmer programs is to help increase um, the number of organic farmers that are successful in our region. Now we say Western North Carolina, but we really serve um, a lot of the Southern Appalachians. And now with these opportunities for virtual learning, we really can expand that network. And so the vision of that mission is to build a network um, of prosperous farmers, gardeners, informed consumers, and creating healthy communities. And when we um, developed that vision and really began to investigate deeper into what that has meant um, in these last you know, four to five years, we really said in order for us to realize and actualize that mission and vision, we really had to have a much deeper commitment and understanding um, to social justice. And so this statement, our commitment to social justice is a long, is a, is a reflection of a long process that our organization went through as one that seeks to transform the food system into one that can truly serve the needs of all communities, um, you know, by doing the education that we do, which seeks to empower people, we needed to understand and um, the impact of historical oppression and systemic racism. And so that's been a large part of our work and learning, I'd say for at least the last five years. Um, and this is also a large part and context um, of the Farm Beginnings class as well. And so I encourage you, um, this will be sent to you after this webinar, but you can also just access it on our website to look at that. And we have some different blog posts related to our journey with this work. Um, as a primarily white-led organization, we've had to do a lot of internal work that then has been able to be reflected in our external relationships and programs, but it, and we continue to do that work. Um, and this message will be very present in Farm Beginnings this year as we're bringing in more teachers of color, farmers of color, and really working to amplify their voices and expertise. So if anyone has any questions at this point, feel free to unmute yourself for a moment and ask, otherwise I will continue. Okay, so all of you are obviously are joining in on this webinar because you have some interest in farming and in growing food or medicine of some kind. And at OGS, you know, and myself personally really strongly believe that farming is a journey and that there are stages to each person's, person's understanding of farming. And so this um, slide is just sort of a representation that kind of shows some of these stages that we've identified in the farming journey. And at each of these stages, each farmer needs a certain kind of support and guidance. And when you first start out farming, your knowledge and understanding and needs are different than when you've been at it, say for three years or 10 years or you know, 15, 20 years. And so our farmer training programs the different ones that we offer at Organic Grower School um, are there to address these different stages of the farming path in order to successfully meet the needs of the farmer and to have that larger impact um, and for that vision that we have of revitalizing the local food um, and agricultural community and creating thriving communities. And so, you know, I know many of you have looked at the application and, and there's this little um, questionnaire we have to kind of help you identify what stage you are at and help feed you into the support and training that you need for that. And so many of you are considering Farm Beginnings. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit about um, the Farm Beginnings Collaborative. And so this is not just a program of Organic Growers School. Um, when I came on in 2015, Organic Growers School had already begun to investigate ways that we could deepen um, our farmer training and farmer support. So we have a very robust apprenticeship 
um, program and a craft program, which I will tell you a little bit more about later. But we were still seeing a real gap in um, people's ability to go from working on farms, uh, maybe year after year even, to successfully launching their own farm business. So they might have a lot of training in the production methodologies and those kinds of things, but there was still something missing that wasn't allowing them to easily um, actualize their own independent farm business. And so um, through our relationships in the craft network, um, we came upon the Farm Beginnings Collaborative. And so it's a farmer training model that is community-based, rooted in sustainable principles and farmer-led. And it's in 10 states and 13 different organizations. You know, some are small nonprofits like Organic Grower School, some are bigger. Um, some work with land stewardship and conservation. Um, some do different food and farming activism. So that there's a bunch of different kinds of organizations, but one of the amazing things about it is that this program has been going since 1997 and has developed um, you know, a shared curriculum and framework that all of us can participate in as members of the collaborative. And it really is an amazing opportunity because um, it connects Organic Grower School to the national landscape of small farming and agriculture all around the United States you know, in many places experience similar challenges um, in small farming. And so it just really allows us to collaborate and access resources and materials and support one another in this work. And the other piece that it really has done, um, it has taken, a, the collaborative has taken a lot of leadership in learning and incorporating more about racial justice and equity in how we teach and in what we teach. And this has been vital to our program at Organic Grower School. And um, you'll see that showing up in the curriculum. And then also this year, as many programs are going virtual, we are all able to support one another um, as we go on that journey of learning how to host and teach virtually. So, what is Farm Beginnings? There are so many things to say about it, um, but this is kind of how I've decided to, you know, distill it down into a few sentences. So it's a decision-making process that helps lead you toward making your farm dreams into a reality. It's just a very short sentence encapsulating what it is. So this class is basically like a container. And so we and I and the different farmers that come in, we are holding this container as we guide you to help you define why you want to farm and help you figure out how to do it. We're not gonna start the first day asking, what do you wanna grow? It's really a class that starts with your visions and hopes and really hones down into the details as the vision is explored. And the class stacks pieces together in a fashion that lets you think and mull things over and decide in line with your values. And I think one of the strongest pieces of the class as well, this farmer led piece is that you hear week after week from farmers. You hear about their stories, their startup, their challenges, and it, it will change your perspective and your plans. And, and that is a good thing. If you start the class, and then by the end of it, you haven't changed your mind about anything, I would not consider that a success. It really does you know, change the vision. And it, it also is a way, like I say, this container, it's a way to do the work. So you know, we all have busy lives. This is a class you know, designed for working people. People have commitments and work and family and all kinds of things. And so this is, um, a class that allows you time because you commit the time to be able to do the work to build your business. And it's a way to help each other in the class and through the cohort development to hold each other accountable to doing our work and to, to creating that vision and that mission to doing your budget work and your research. And you have this cohort of peers and a team of farmers and mentors that will help you along the way. Okay, I'm gonna stop my screen for a minute just to make sure everybody is on board. Okay. 
All right. Everyone's hearing okay? Everything's going fine? If you know, I, I think that you can do these little reactions um, at the bottom. I forgot to say that these little reaction things like a little clap or a thumbs up right next to um, near the chat icon. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Making sure everybody's out there. All right, great. Well, I will keep going. Go back to my screen share. Okay, so this is just a slide about, you know, who should apply. So folks interested in a full-time or part-time farming career, commitment to participate in a minimum of 10 hours of training per month. Um, that 10 hours was based on the in-person classes. Um, we'll go over the time, the in-person time in a few slides. Um, willingness to be a learner, make the investment, the commitment, reading, thinking, planning, dreaming. Obviously transportation is not required. And then we do ask um, for some experience um, farming or gardening. Um, that is, you know, I consider every application individually. So that isn't a, a make or break necessary um, requirement. So what does the actual program look like this year? So this year, we will be starting classes in October. It will be 13 to 15 online class sessions that focus on, I call it whole farm planning. I mean, that includes um, business planning, financial planning, marketing, uh, mission, vision, all those pieces. It does include mentoring, where you're matched with a mentor for one-on-one -on -one support. And then we also have conferences and production training that usually start in March and go through September till when you graduate. At this time, we do not know what 2021 will look like. Um, we have programs going virtual starting, well, they started already in May with our craft program. They have all been virtual. Our harvest conference will be virtual. So more will be determined on that, but we do are creating lots of virtual trainings right now. And then the cost this year, um, we have reduced it a tiny bit. It's 2,700 for up to two farm members. And we do have scholarships available plus the early bird discount. We also offer um, some work trade spots, which this year will likely be um, more in the realm of digital support as opposed to setting up coffee and tea and helping me sweep the room. So um, that will look a little different this year. And then, um, we also offer payment plans. So don't let the price dissuade you. Think of it as investment upfront in your farm business and it will save you thousands down the road. This year's um, training is going to be on Thursday evenings. And I've designed it with some breaks, except for January. Expect January to be very full. So um, we're going to have Thursday evenings from 6 to 6.30 will be my office hours. So I'll just log on to Zoom like I did. Some of you were already here and I'll have a half an hour where folks can just come in and ask questions or need clarification or whatever it can be. Um, that will be open time. And if I need to do more of that at other times, I will. Um, I will definitely be learning as we go about the needs of you all in this virtual classroom. And then the actual class time will be 6.30 to 8.30. Oh, thank you. And then, um, so I've designed it to have three weeks, then a break is kind of how it, it goes. Just to give a little space and breathing room, when we have the um, in-person classes, they're usually two or three times a month. They're not every week. So I wanted to still build in some of that space and not rush the process. And so these are the dates currently. January is going to be very full because we have every week for Farm Beginnings. And then um, this year, because of the virtual classroom, there are some pieces in the Farm Beginnings curriculum. They're called the Principles of Sustainable Ag that really will not be replicable um, in the time frame that we have allotted for a virtual classroom. And so we have another program that we ran last year called Holistic Crop Management. And I actually helped design it and use a lot of the same material 
that I have used in Farm Beginnings for this. And since this program is being managed um, by my colleague and I'm helping her with it, we just decided to give you all access to that. Um, and I know that um, one of our student, one of the Farm Beginnings students, Ellen, is on the call tonight, and she actually came to a holistic crop management. So I'll let her say something about that in a minute, if she would like, or later. But this is a way for you to get those pieces that um, dig more into the, you know, some of the, the most of the stuff that most of us really love and why we want to be farmers is learning about ecosystems, talking about bugs, learning about soil all that kind of stuff. Um, that is a six part webinar series. And so you all have access to all of those. I'm gonna ask that you attend at least two um, because like I said, it will be very busy in January because it'll be Tuesday and Thursday evenings. So in the Farm Beginnings class, so we're holding this container for you. We're leading you through this process you're hearing from different farmers we're creating the building blocks and the scaffolding and so when you leave the class one of the takeaways that you take with you um, we develop a holistic goal which is a part of the values clarification about your quality of life we work on enterprise planning um, figuring out you know how to figure out what enterprises you want to have on your farm what kind of timeline what kind of budget will that look like we look at um, home finances and home budgeting. We develop a growing season learning plan, which starts um, after the, um, the classes are done. Usually it starts in March. And it's a plan laid out to help you identify skills that you need to work on throughout the growing season. And many, if not all of those, will be able to be um, worked on in conjunction with your mentor. So it's really just sort of laying out a plan for you when the online classes end as you move into your mentorship and production training um, through the other pieces of the course. We talk a lot about marketing and then of course your business basics. So, you know, understanding more about what kind of business structure is good for you, um, information about taxes and licensing and those pieces that will be relevant for your specific business. all of those pieces that you will be developing as a part of the class and I think that's why I really feel like it's a decision making process all of those pieces can be utilized to create a business plan so if you create a mission and vision if you create different budgets if you understand your home finances you can create you know a balance sheet or a cash flow statement all those things can then be used if you want to apply for lending or if you're applying for a grant or, or doing some kind of um, investment pitch. All those pieces will be there and, and you'll be ready. So you'll just give yourself that time over the months to develop, to develop those pieces. I'm gonna take some water. And then um, the other pieces that are a part of the course that are not the classes everyone is invited and able to attend the business of farming conference which is by the appalachian sustainable agriculture project now like i said we don't really know what 21 2021 is going to look like and so if it is an in-person event and you're from far away then, and it's not possible for you to attend, and then obviously you do not have to. Um, you know, I know for Organic Grower School, we are already planning for our spring conference, which is in March, and what that would need to look like if it were to be virtual. So that you will have access to the OGS created resources for sure. Um, our mentoring program, we have a mentoring meetup in January, where you'll be able to learn about different mentors, and try to find, I work with you to help you identify someone who would be a good fit. Um, and we still have some pieces to figure out if folks are coming in from different states. Um, so we'll have to take that on a case by case basis about how we can make that work for everyone. And then the craft program, which I mentioned a few minutes ago, I have another slide coming up that will talk about that. And then the holistic crop management, which I mentioned already. 
Um, that will be a six part series. I have some more information on that coming up. And then Living Leg programs, the Harvest Conference and one-on-one -on -one support by myself as a facilitator. And I'm hoping to have a co-facilitator this year. And so a large part of what I do is I'm kind of your to-go resource. Like I review the work that you create, I give feedback, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one support. And I anticipate with the online virtual classroom that I may need to do more of that. And I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm excited to be able to do that. So the craft program that I mentioned that you will be a part of as a part of the Farm Beginnings class, normally it is once to twice a month um, meetups on farms where you talk about different production methodologies, livestock, crop planning, irrigation, winter growing, alternative energy. There's all kinds of topics. And it's really a way to build that network between experienced farmers and beginning farmers and apprentices and folks that are working on farms. Now this year they have, some of them have been live streamed, some of them have been recorded. Um, it has been a very successful program at Organic Grower School. And I know myself going on different farms, just seeing what other people do and just being able to understand it has just really helped us as well um, as we make decisions and, and try different things out. And then the spring conference that I mentioned, um, we have all different kinds of tracks, um, different themes, and as a Farm Beginning student, you are able to, to really take whatever you want. So it's kind of a fun opportunity. You could really focus in on just one thing, like I'm just doing soils the entire week, weekend, or you can focus in on lots of different fun things like cooking or sustainable forestry, uh, mushrooms, all kinds of stuff. So there's lots of options for the spring conference. Um, nope. So I thought I had a slide that said a little bit more about the holistic crop management, but I'm actually gonna go to the website for a minute and show that. And so these are the other pieces that, this is all included in your tuition. Um, so, the Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy is a partner of ours in this program and they have a community farm. And some of you may know they have an incubator farm as well. And so they host workshops there also about once a month. Um, you know, they've done like BCS, like that small rototiller and the different attachments, like a walk behind tractor workshop. They've done irrigation design. They've done um, like a wash stand and pack shed design. Um, small scale cooling on the farm. Like they just do all kinds of things there, um, many of which they've built out for their incubator farmers. Um, so that's a great resource for us. And then Living, Living Web Farms, many of you may know, um, another great educational uh, provider in our area. And most of their trainings right now are online and they have a farm as well in Mills River. And so um, those are accessible to you as Farm Beginning students as well. And I don't require you to take certain topics. They have a whole spectrum. So that's pretty awesome. And then the Holistic Crop Management Webinar Series. And I'm just gonna stop my screen share for a minute and just show you that um, because there's a few pieces of that. Oh, all right. This is a nice picture of somebody. <laughs> Let's see. All right, I'm just gonna get over to the holistic crop management if I can. Alrighty, just a moment. I'm at the OGS office and usually we have pretty good internet here without any problems. So I hope that remains the case.
Well, that seems to be taking a long time to load from the website. So we'll just wait on that for a while. So basically the holistic crop management webinar series in January, um, it has a session on soil health and it has a session on weed management, pest management and disease management. And then there's a, a larger sort of over, overarching session, the first one, and I actually teach that. Um, and that's talking about ecosystem processes, which is a framework of holistic management, um, the holistic management framework. And that really just teaches you about how to um, look at the different systems on your farm and identify them, how they interact and, and how to make decisions based on those interactions. Um, so that is the holistic crop management. And so all of that will be included with the Farm Beginnings class. Okay, so that is all I have for my presentation. So I wanted to open it up to questions, um, which folks can do either in the chat or if you wanna unmute and just ask. Um, I'm sure there's things I'm not thinking of that folks would like to know more about. I'm happy to talk about the instructors if you want to understand and learn more about the instructors. Um, we do have a current student on the call if you have any questions for her or if Ellen, you want to say anything? <laughs> She's raising her hands. I don't know. <laughs> That's totally fine. You don't have to. I just, oh. It's been fantastic. The best thing about the course, in my opinion, I mean, you can take gardening workshops, you can take farming workshops, you can take holistic crop management workshops with how to do this and how to do that. But the value in this is to focus your vision, define your mission, it's sort of taking all your dreams and putting them in a nice little stack and and then shaping them a little bit. And really they crystallize. And I mean, this took months to do this. It, it, it was for me, who I'm not a particularly decisive person and I, I have a very vivid imagination and I can see all possibilities at one time and then not be able to decide on any one of them. But I did manage to um, crystallize a pretty good a uh, vision statement and um, I was really proud of myself that I was <laughs> able to do that and and Nicole oh my god she is a fabulous teacher and all the visiting instructors that we had were superb everybody was well chosen for the lessons that they were giving we had a CPA who specializes in farms come and talk to us about uh, tax uh, incentives and, and um, reporting and stuff like that. Um, and, and with the virtual uh, fac or virtual faculty, oh my gosh, it just seems like the sky would be the limit. So, <laughs> uh, or maybe no limit, I don't know. It, it, it's a very exciting proposition. I'm actually going to repeat the classes. I uh, had some complications and didn't actually get to purchase my land till the end of February. So while everybody else was sort of taking their lessons and putting them right to work, I'm, you know, trying to deal with uh, contrary sellers and, and all that. But anyway, that's finally going and um, I'm observing my land now and assessing my little microsystems and or micro oh, oh, environments <laughs> and oh, and I'm going to repeat the class and then it, I think it'll make a lot more sense and I can apply it immediately. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so if you're wondering why is she doing this again, <laughs> that's why. It's not a reflection on Nicole or anybody else. It's, I'm just a little delayed. But um, Thanks, it has Ellen. been wonderful. Thank you. Um, so I will say that um, you know, owning land is not a requirement of the class. And I have seen it be successful 
for folks that do own land and for folks that don't. Got had plenty of people through the years take the class um, before they purchase land and really it helped them clarify what kind of land they wanted, how to understand how to make that decision, how to access financing, capital, all that stuff. And also for many folks, you know, they reduced what they thought they wanted. You know, I want 100 acres, or I want this, and then realize, oh no, I want much less than that. So, um, you know, certainly if you're on land already or currently farming, you can start applying some of the ideas, but it's not a total requirement. Um, so someone did ask in the chat, is there any subject relating to farm site design and building? So um, we do have someone on the Organic Grower School staff, Brandon Greenstein, who does come in and talk about um, different frameworks for looking at farm and land design. And also um, that is something that could also, um, we have pieces in our spring conference that focus on that. And then also through the mentorship, you know, we can select a mentor that has um, strong skills in that area. So um, you don't get every single thing in the class itself, but in the other pieces of the course, um, you can also get a little bit deeper dive into some of those specific areas. We do talk about land access. Um, and also we'll talk a little bit about some of the history of land loss um, in our country and just kind of land as a concept as well. Um, so any other kind of questions for me or comments? Do you envision any difficulty for living out of state? So I think we have some unknowns right now. Um, I'm personally really excited about having participants join from other states. Um, I will say that, you know, I just will strive to be flexible. So for example, if in 2021, we are able to do our in-person events in person, and you're not able to come to them or only come to some, you know, we can work together to, um, they have let you have access to other kinds of workshops or conferences in your region potentially. Um, and then I will need to um, be able to explore and understand more about the mentorship piece. So the way mentorship is, um, most of it, it, it's a combination of remote and in-person. And so it's a total of up to 15 hours. That's the amount of hours that we pay the mentor for. And so some folks, you know, choose to do that in chunks, like they meet up one-on-one. -on -one. And so for this year, even students currently in the class, they are, you know, if, if the mentor is comfortable and they're comfortable, they have been meeting in person, you know, on a farm outside, you can be pretty safe with COVID. That being said, you know, you can do a lot of learning remotely as well. Um, usually we do ask mentors, you know, at least to come to your piece of land if you have it at least once, and we do want you to go to theirs. Um, so the mentorship is designed to be really flexible. And if we can't do our mentor meetup in person, I'm actually not expecting that it will be in person. It will be a mentor meetup virtually like our classes. Um, that's that's how I'm planning that it will be for this year. Um, I have in the past had students from out of state and was able through our um, other agricultural organizations in neighboring states able to match them with a mentor in their own state. I cannot guarantee that I can do that if I have you know, lots of folks from lots of different places. Um, but we have a mentor in our network. She's been a farmer. I guess it's like 30 years now. She mentors people from all over the country. You know, she talks on the phone with them. She sends them research and resources. Like it is not unsuccessful if it is, um, if it's only in person, it can be successful in lots of different ways. So um, we just have to have a little bit of openness as we move forward together in this um, different landscape. But we have a lot of networks, so, um, I feel good about being able to connect everyone with who they need to be connected with. I hope that answers that to the best of my ability.
Um, any other questions about instructors or things like that? Uh, I am bringing in a few new instructors this year that have taught for Organic Grower School in other programs, but will be new to Farm Beginnings, which I'm excited about. Um, you know, because of that virtual piece, I can bring farmers in that are further afield in North Carolina. So I'm happy about that. Okay, well, I know some of you have started applications. Um, so if you have any hangups on that or questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will be, you know, I accept people sort of on a rolling basis. So I'm just about to do my first round with the first um, batch, I guess, of applicants. And then we'll just go from there. Yeah, there's another question about land. So um, I, through the class, this will be my sixth year teaching the class. Um, and this past year's class, everyone had land access, which was unusual. In most of my classes, I have most of my participants that do not have land access. Um, most of them were not landowners. Some of them had access through leasing. So um, I think the class can really do a lot to help you understand not only like how to access land like physically financing money resources where and also um, it can really help with understanding what you're looking for you know i think a lot of times you know and i know this myself with the farm that we got um there's so many parts of it that are already kind of they have their structure and we can't really do much to change certain things. So if you have a little bit more information up front about what your needs are, um, it can really help in that land search, even if you're leasing land. I think there's so many pieces of the class that could really help for that with that process. So I actually, my personal preference is to have people take it before they own land. Um, so. And then how many people am I accepting into the program? I'm not entirely sure. Um, <clears throat> in our live sessions, it's been like as many as 24. So, um, you know, I think a virtual space, I don't really want it to be that large either, just because I do like to keep that, um, you know, developing relationships with each of you, with you, with each other, and kind of keep it intimate. Um, so I don't anticipate many beyond um, what we normally do in person. So I, I'm sort of open, like it's definitely not going to be 50 people. It'll probably be, you know, 20 to 30 at maximum. And I, I hope everyone understands that um, if you do have a farm business partner or um, a life partner, you know, it, and even if they're not as intimately involved in the farm, I encourage you to have them apply as well. And Ellen could speak to this actually, because her partner also joined. And, and even though, you know, um, he didn't necessarily come all the time, just having the option for that person to be able to come is really awesome and be able to access all the other parts of the class too. So if you have a partner who's on the fence or a business partner, um, I really encourage you to um, invite them to participate because I think that will really help make your farm planning and business development more robust. So um, there was a question about my availability. So I work part-time for Organic Grower School and I have my farm and it's July, so it's quite busy. So right now um, I'm primarily working afternoons. So I check my email every day. So if you, you know, email me questions or things, um, you know, I get back to you pretty fast. Arranging phone calls can be a little more challenging this time of year, but um, 
I have, I have someone we've been trying to play in phone tag a little bit, but um, if you need to talk on the phone, we can try to arrange a time that will work. But um, I'm checking my email every day, even on the weekends. So if you have any um, issues with the online application or anything like that, um, yeah, I'm available to help with that. So, um, the Farm Beginnings class, there is another question about, um, you know, farming, full-time, part-time. A huge part of what we do in the class is a lot of self-inventory, um, looking at skills and resources, passion, and, you know, as, you know, if you are in a career currently or you have a job and you want to make farming, you know, it is a passion and you want to make it a livelihood. Um, we do a lot of exploration of that. Like, how can you make that work um, time-wise, financially? Because sometimes you, you know, folks might think farming is their passion and it can be, but when you tie it to livelihood and income generation, that can sometimes take the fun and passion out of it. And so the class really um, helps, will help each of you really dig into that and learn to understand um, you know, what you want that journey to look like. And I will say that many of my current and Farm Beginnings graduates, um, you know, some have jumped in with both feet after years of planning and resource collection and networking so that they have some base to work on to launch the business. Um, some have retained, you know, part-time work or even full-time work as they're building up that business. So this class will really, um, you know, ha help you in that process of making that decision for your, for your life. Um, if you check out the Organic Growers School Instagram, I've been putting up a lot of posts on there about Farm Beginnings current students and graduates. And two of our current students will be doing an Instagram takeover the next few days, starting tomorrow through Sunday. And they'll just talk about their farm and their journey with Farm Beginnings and kind of what it has meant for them. So we've got all different kinds of students um, that have come through the class. And we have lots of successful graduates farming in Western North Carolina and in Georgia, <laughs> which is exciting. All right, well, we've just got a few more minutes left. So if anyone has any more questions, um, feel free to pop them in the chat or we can um, unmute. And what I will do after this um, webinar, I have the recording. If you're here, I don't really know why you would listen to it again, but I'll send you the recording. And then I also will send you a PDF of my PowerPoint. So if you want to review that, um, you can do that afterwards. So George is asking about, um, do we offer help getting apprenticeships or part-time work on farms? So we have those resources in Western North Carolina, George, and I know you're in Florida, I think. Um, so, we can certainly provide you with some organizations in Florida, but we have lots of networks in, in, in Western North Carolina and in the whole state. Um, and there's lots of other organizations that we, you know, know of who help um, find folks work on farms, you know, either as paid work or volunteering or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, certainly we can network you in that way if that's something that you need and are interested in. Well, it has been nice to sort of see you all, see your names. <laughs> I know you didn't really get to see me either. Maybe I'll put my video on for a minute as we say goodbye. <laughs> I think it's kind of dark in here now <laughs> in this office. Yeah, I didn't turn the light on. 
Thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's really dark, so you can't really see me. Let me turn the light on. There we go. Well, thank you so much. And like I said, I'll send the follow up email and feel free to get in touch and let me know what else you might need. All right, thanks everybody. <laughs> thanks, Ellen.